Hey, what's up? This is John Moyer from the band Art of Anarchy. This is Scott Staff from Art of Anarchy, and you are watching Andy. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Scott and John from Art of Anarchy. Hello. What's up? How are you both hey, doing? Doing good. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, good to be here. It's a very exciting time because you just dropped your latest record release, The Madness. It's very fresh, so how are you feeling about everything? I mean, we're very proud of the record. Uh, it was definitely a labor of love. Uh, you know, it's a new band for, for Scott and I, you know. He comes from Creed, and, and of course he's been doing his solo projects. I just finished a tour with Disturbed, and so, and you know, we've got Ron Thal Bumblefoot, you know, who's from Guns N' Roses fame and also does his own uh, solo projects. So the three of us together with the other two members, it was definitely a challenge trying to figure out what the band's identity was. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we did it, and we came up with something cool and fresh, and, and I think the last thing we wanted to do was put something out that wasn't new to fans or to anyone. We didn't want to put something out that was just that's already been done. We wanted to do something fresh. And, and definitely something that was different than what we had all done in our other bands. Yep. You know what I mean? And I think, I think we really accomplished that. You know, I don't think at all this sounds like anything that I've ever done or John's ever done. No, not at all. I mean, uh, Scott's always going to sound like Scott. You know, the singer of a band, you know, and he has a very iconic voice. Absolutely. But I think all of us purposefully tried to approach this record from a different standpoint, you know, I think he's singing in a different register than he ever has before. Mm -hmm. You know, the baritone that you're used to hearing him in some of his previous projects, he's not there anymore. He's taken his voice up a notch. He's using areas, and he says it all the time, I'm, I'm singing in ways I've never sung before. Yeah. Is that yeah. difficult for you to get into? Um, it, it, it wasn't difficult because it, the music called for it, so it was just you had to sing in that, re in that register. I think the, the difficult part <clears throat> is just getting your voice conditioned to tour, you know, because I got so used to singing in a certain register uh, for the last 20 years. So, uh, but my, my voice is handling it well, and, and uh, I like what we're doing, and, and so things are going good. A big fan question going into this, seeing that you all did come from different groups, and you've been doing this for quite some time on your right. own in your own right. Was there any butting heads in putting stuff together? I mean, I'm assuming that a lot of the time you're like, oh, I know how to do this, or this is my way, and other people might disagree. I think the most difficult challenge was just getting on the same page artistically. But as far as like, uh, you know, executing the ideas, you know, each person picked up the football when they needed to. Yeah, I mean, and we, we all came in with really positive attitudes and really, you know, just wanting to, to have a positive experience. And so anyone who came up with an idea, we, we chased it down the rabbit hole and we gave it a chance. Uh, and the ideas would usually that didn't work. Everyone would co collectively feel after we, you know, ran through it. You'd okay, be on the this, same page. Yeah, this isn't working. So no one really shut anybody down, or there was no real uh, butting heads. I mean, there there was obviously, uh, which happens in every band, just taste differences. Of course. You know, um, everyone in this band has a very strong. Uh, and vocal opinion as to what they like and of course there were certain conversations but everything remained positive and there was never any you know in each other's face or no and like you heads. said we all you know there's a mutual respect that comes in where you know scott goes hey i hear something here that i want to do with my voice and it's like okay when he gets to explore it you know and, and ron uh you know, he engineered and produced the record there's a ton of songwriting on it, so, you know, he in his own right, you know, we, we knew when to kind of let him be to do his studio thing, you know, to, to make this what it could be, and then, you know, reaches a point where we put in what we put in, and we look at everyone else, and we go, okay, how's this sound, everybody? It's like, that's great, change that. <laughs> so, yeah. A lot of that molding. Yeah. I mean, everybody was involved in every aspect of, of the record, um, so... It was definitely a, a, a band effort. I mean, we all have our lanes, um, you know, but uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good process. The thing that I most enjoy about this record is that you can have some real blistering guitar solos and there's some more soft, ten, you know, tender moments on the, on the yeah. release. So when you went into it, was your one rule to have no rules or did you go in there like, I know what type of record we want to create? I don't think we knew what we were doing at first. Yeah? yeah we, we had no rules. I mean, yeah. uh, that's John Vada, Voda, 
Yeah. I always say his name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Siri also calls him Vada, so don't feel bad. Yeah. There you go. You're not alone. <laughs> but, you know, one thing about Art of Anarchy and the reason that it's named Art of Anarchy is it's art with no rules. Uh, and so we, we really were trying to, to find who we were as a unit on this record. Um, and there were no, no rules, man. Just whatever happened, happened. Something that I find that's really cool is aside from just performing, music goes beyond the concerts, goes beyond the albums as at home. You listen to it all the time with your kids. Like they're playing a lot of it. Yeah. So who are some people that you are digging in both of your households? Oh, musically? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I'm, I'm really digging. I, I like 21 Pilots a lot. Nice. Got to interview them a little bit ago. Yeah. Very cool guys. Yeah, very, very fresh musically. Uh, I, I dig what they're doing. Um, that's one that just jumps to the top of my head right now. Uh, <clears throat> my nine-year-old son turned me on to this artist. His name is Nate Wants to Battle. Okay. He doesn't tour. If you haven't heard of him, he's not no. on the label. He's got almost two million YouTube followers. And he writes these songs... Uh, usually about video games so it's like you know about the Assassin's Creed based song and he's got one that's kind of about Five Nights at Freddy's and these other okay. video games the music's amazing though it's amazing top notch rock performances wow. with a metal edge to it his voice is super catchy great melodies I mean I don't know why the guy doesn't tour I mean I guess he doesn't need to he's got his internet thing yeah. going on but honestly over the last couple of years that's been I, I listen to Nate almost every day Wow, it's the weirdest thing and it's like he's not even like <laughs> Like, nobody knows who he is, you know, in, in the, the music world because it's not like he's making waves playing shows or anything like that. But I listen to stuff. I get inspired. I get, uh, I just enjoy it, you know. I, whether I'm going to work out at the gym or, or just try to listen to something for inspiration, this guy kills it. But that's, you know, Nate Wants to Battle. That's that's my new thing. Nate Wants to Battle. It's such an interesting <laughs> name, too. Interesting name, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. <laughs> Check guy. it out. We well, are now on your first headline tour, taking the madness out on the road in Toronto yeah. tonight. We're briefly discussing this, John and I, but how are things going over? You know, they're they're going good. I mean, we had our, of course, first show, uh, Kinks, that you know happened. I they just got to grind through with with every band, uh, especially guys that have never performed, you know, live together on tour. Uh, and you know, we we got through that first show and worked out the Kinks. Second show was was. Phenomenally better. Yeah, <laughs> and and we just expect to continue to 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 get better and better every night the more we play. And this will be, as a band, our first show internationally. Yes. So here we are, third show now in Canada. Congratulations. Yep, yep. It's gonna be good, and you know, as many like it's like Scott was saying, it's a work in progress. You know, after every show, we make our notes of okay, this could be better, this could be better, this could be better. So. You know, even tonight, we've got a list of things to implement, and, and we'll continue to do so. You know, I, I think it doesn't really matter how long the band's touring together. You're always, you know, if you care about what you're doing, you're always trying to make sure yep. that, that anything that's weak or any ideas that can make the show a better, you know, for yourself and for the crowd, you try to implement it, and that's definitely where we're at right now. With anything, you don't want to become complacent, right? Right, right. Well, I just want to do a little quick fire round with the two of you, so you just say whatever comes to mind first. Right. Oh, here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. All right, first one. What's the wallpaper on your phone? My kids. I've got moving zombies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you love to still see in concert that you have yet to? You too. I've seen so many people. Hold on, I'm trying to think of who I haven't seen yet. I like how sing it quicker. It, it would have been, been Ramstein, but I just saw them this summer. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, who haven't I seen yet that I'd like to see? Okay, I'm sorry, drawing a blank. Can't it's alright, we'll go to the next one. If it comes back, just scream it. <laughs> For the next one, uh, worst job you've had? Landscaper. I worked the bathroom at a rave. Okay, that would have been brutal. Oh yeah. That one definitely beats yours. Yeah, it does. <laughs> who's, it does. who's the cheapest in the band? The most frugal? Sure. We can, <laughs> we can go with that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 that's, a hard, that's, that's a hard question to answer. I don't really know. We're all pretty frugal, I think, about it. Who's <laughs> um, the cheapest in the band? Wow. I mean, does it count that Ron only eats an apple a day? Let's just say Ron. Okay. Really? Yeah. Ron Bumble, Bumblefoot. Bumblefoot. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say Bumblefoot. Just to wrap everything up, is there anything you want to leave with all of your fans who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Um, you know, we're so uh, appreciative to all the fans that have got the record and been coming to the shows. And uh, 
you know, we're just grateful to be out here and, and come check us out, man. You won't be disappointed. Awesome. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, no problem. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time.